Well, Zach, welcome to the program. Thank you. So first, tell me, what is a mangrove? So a mangrove is a, it's a blue carbon ecosystem. So it's an ecosystem that grows in a, in a saltwater environment, um, either subtropical or tropical areas. It's a tree, and it's very unique to some certain parts of the world, Northwest Mexico being one of those. So how are they able to remove carbon from the air and store it? So just like any plant species, it, it intakes carbon, but with mangroves have, and especially these desert mangroves in Mexico, is this root system, very intricate root system and a large soil substrate around it. So it takes the carbon in through its leaves, deposits it through its root system into the sediment below it, and it has these vast areas of the sediment around them where it stores all this carbon. That's why those ecosystems, those mangroves in Northwest Mexico are so effective at carbon sequestration. And so how is it that these mangroves are so efficient at taking in carbon? Because they are much more efficient than say a forest of the same size. Yeah, so they, they not only store the carbon within the plant itself, but they have this very intricate root system that then deposits it in this vast soil area around it. So it's not just directly under the tree itself, but around it as well. That's why these desert mangroves in Baja are so effective because they have these big mud flats around this area. And the science shows that, even, that these, these mangrove, desert mangroves in, in Mexico sequester up to five times more carbon than tropical mangroves. Mm. And so how important are mangroves to climate uh, policy, climate change policy? So in terms of policy, not enough yet. We're just learning how effective that these ecosystems are. We're trying to integrate them into policy in Mexico. And then there's similar ecosystems like seagrasses and salt marsh in California that actually can also play a big role. We're trying to integrate those into policy as well. Do you have a sense of how much carbon uh, this mangrove off of the coast of Baja, California is actually taking in? Right, so the 39,000 acres of mangroves that we've looked at in the Gulf of California and in Magdalena Bay and Southern Baja, California store about 19.5 million metric tons of carbon. That's the equivalency of about 1 million people's annual carbon emissions. Wow, so uh, Wild Coast has been working with the Mexican government on this restoration project. What does all of this entail? Right, so we've been working with the Mexican national gov federal government, the Mexican National Park Service essentially since 2008 to set aside these mangrove areas for conservation. So they can't be owned, and by law they're actually protected. They can't be uh, cut down. That doesn't mean that they're not cut down, and that doesn't mean that there's land uses around these mangroves that can have an impact. So we're buffering these areas. We're actually we're actually getting concessions for these mangroves to put them under the management of the Park Service, essentially creating protected areas where these mangroves are, where they weren't protected as well. We're also working with Griffith University in Australia to do all the science. So it's a trinational effort between Wild Coast, which is a US and Mexico based organization, the Mexican national government and institutions in Australia to do the research to show how much carbon there is and to show what it would mean if we stopped the degradation of these forests. And there's also an economic component to this project too, right? Yeah, so the, the amount of carbon that, that is stored here and that would continue to be sequestered if we can leave these mangroves alone is about half a million dollars on the voluntary carbon market. And they're also, these mangroves are also a basis for commercial fisheries, for ecotourism. So there's a lot of other benefits other than the carbon sequestration value of them. So mangroves are helping sequester carbon dioxide, which contributes to climate change, but are mangroves also at risk because of climate change itself? Absolutely. So in areas that mangroves don't have a place to migrate to, so with sea level rise, we're going to see coastal ecosystems move if they can. If there's development or agriculture, or other land uses right up against where these mangroves are, they will not be able to migrate and they will actually be squeezed out by sea level rise. So it's not only important that we protect the mangroves that are there now, but areas around it to allow them to move over time. If mangroves can be restored as you're doing in Baja, does that mean they can also be planted anywhere in the world to help guard against climate change maybe? Not anywhere in the world. They grow in very particular, particular climate, so it needs to be warm. There needs to be certain levels of salinity. But what we're looking at is restore, reforestation projects in Mexico. So we just got gr a grant from the United Nations Development Program to restore about 100 acres of degraded mangroves in a place called San Ignacio Lagoon. That's the world's last undeveloped California gray whale breeding ground, also home to these mangrove ecosystems. So we're actually looking to reforest certain areas, and that project's very scalable to other areas in Baja, the Gulf of California, and throughout um, tropical parts of the world where these mangroves grow. So what does this Keeling Curve Prize Award mean for Wild Coast? So this Keeling Curve Prize shows 
recognition of our project. We're on to a great idea. We're getting a lot of exposure because of winning this award, but we're also getting $25,000 in funding. That it's gonna help us advance the protection of these mangroves. It's gonna allow us to continue to do the science. And we're also gonna use that funding to go through the accreditation process. We have a project that's accredited in the voluntary carbon market. So we can actually work with the Mexican government to sell carbon credits that can then be reinvested in the management and conservation of these areas. All right, I've been speaking with Zach Plopper, Conservation Director at Wild Coast. Zach, thank you so much. Thank you.